Welcome to Creating and Hosting Virtual Office Hours. My name is Carla McKenzie, and I'm the Instructional Technologist for Morton College. Before we begin, you are certainly welcome to minimize any disruptions to our session by clicking the purple tab in the lower right corner, sliding over to the gear, which is actually the My Settings tab, then selecting the Notification Settings panel, and deselecting any notifications that you may find slightly disruptive to our session. In addition, you may want to magnify content on the screen. If there's any content that's slightly illegible, you're welcome to click the magnifying glass in the upper left corner, and you can zoom in or out of any content that's presented today. And then lastly, you're certainly welcome to provide digital feedback by clicking the avatar in the lower middle of your media panel. And that will open up into this pop-up window where you can provide some digital feedback in the form of an emoticon. So if everyone can let me know they found the digital feedback at this time. If everyone can let me know that they, there we go. Thank you so much, perfect. Everyone has found it, great, all right. So our session today should last about 45 minutes. I will leave about 15 minutes of question and answer. Our style today will be to present content and then demonstrate. You can certainly type questions into the chat. You are also welcome to follow up with me via email at carla.mckenzie at morton.edu. And I do have training guides and handouts available. So with no further ado, we're gonna go ahead and begin. Virtual office hours and versus a virtual session. If you hold virtual office hours, that's a session that you're gonna hold pretty much every week, maybe even two times a week, or maybe even per class. You might have one session for one class or one session for another class. But it's when students know that you're online and available to meet their needs. So just like stopping by your office, if you were holding a face-to-face -face class, it's a repeating session that will launch directly from the course menu. And the student is the one that determines what's being covered during the session. So you're pretty much going over what that student wants to talk to you about during that actual session. On the other hand, a virtual session that be held weekly also, but that's more or less your regular class session with your students if you are performing synchronous sessions. And lectures will be presented and possibly recorded. Students expect a lesson in the actual content. So they are not telling you what they need to cover, rather you are determining what's going to be covered and how the session actually progresses. So I did want you to know the difference between what a virtual office hours are versus an actual virtual session. So I have a handout that I um, can provide to everyone. So this looks a lot different from any other presentation because I do want you to rely on this particular handout. So for example, together as a group, we're gonna go through this and then I'm gonna show you my screen. And then also you're able to simultaneously set up your virtual session. So I do wanna reiterate to you, if you're going to create a virtual session, or if you're going to create virtual office hours, they're pretty much done the same way. The difference is one, the student is going to tell you what, what they need to discuss, or two, you're conducting an actual lesson. So for both, you're going to click the create session button. You're going to enter the event details, just like you would any other session. So you're going to have the start date and the start time and the end date and the end time. Now your virtual session, since it's your actual class, you might have a repeat session, say every Monday and Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 o'clock. So that you may have a repeating session. And then you may also provide a description for or allow early entry. All of those are up to you. 
probably going to be a repeat session. Then you're going to click the create button to save it. Now, if you need a guest link, that guest link will not be available just like here until you first save the session because you're creating a brand new session. So it does not give you a guest link until after you click create. Once you do that, then the guest link will be available and then you still will need to save here a little bit later as well. So I do want to let you know, if you have a repeating session, the start date and the end date will be the same. In other words, if the session repeats, you're going to have to click this checkbox and then let Blackboard do the math for you. In other words, some of my faculty have been giving an actual end date and giving an end time and they're running into trouble. So I don't want that to happen to you. Make the start date and the end date the same, but the start time is going to be different and the end time is going to be different. So if you have a session that's on Mondays and Wednesdays, every Mondays and Wednesdays at eight to nine, you just leave the start and end date the same and you indicate how many occurrences it's gonna take for that session to end. So if it's all 16 weeks of the semester, then you will select this um, every week right here, every Monday and Wednesday, you select the days, and then you indicate that this is gonna end after five sessions, so that's five weeks, or this is gonna end after 16 sessions, and that's 16 weeks. And you will get 16 different sessions you will need to go in each of those individual sessions, but your guest link does not change. So session one will end after week one and session two will then begin. Okay, so I just want to kind of make that very clear to you. Next, if you are in your virtual session, you're going to join the session that we just set up you're going to click the session menu, which is right here. And then you're going to start the recording. And then you're going to share a file, begin your lecture, start speaking, engage your students. Now, if this is your asynchronous session, you're going to do the same thing, except there's no students in the course. So you won't do the polling or the digital feedback, but you are gonna share a file that you want to lecture on at that time. So share a file, go ahead and present your content and step through it. And then you're going to end the session, but before you do, you're going to stop the recording. Be sure to go back to the session menu and stop the recording. And then in that same area, you leave the session. So if you don't stop the recording, it will keep recording for about four hours and then it'll take a long time for it to render. So you definitely want to stop that session if this is asynchronous or if it's synchronous, you definitely want to stop the session. So here, when you're hosting and recording your virtual session, it doesn't matter if students are in the session or not, you're still going to share a file, you're still going to Pretend that you have some students if you don't, or if your students are out there, you're going to take any questions that they have, you're going to poll them, give them digital feedback, actually conduct class, and then answer any questions in the chat and end the session. So that's both for an asynchronous or a synchronous session. The only difference is going to be that you're not going to do any of the engagement activities if it's asynchronous. And then lastly, if you want to set up virtual office hours, whether it's for a single class or for multiple classes. So I've kind of directed this handout at multiple classes. So you can invite students from different classes. You don't have to invite them if they're in your actual class. But if you have two students of the same class and you want to maximize your efficiency, I personally, if I had two sections, 101 and 101B, 
I would have one set of office hours if I could and invite both students to join me during that time. Just like if I were in my office sitting there waiting for students to visit me and they never visit. So if they have questions, I'd rather maximize my time where both sections know that I'm available online for chatting or discussing anything that they want. And then they can um, all visit me. So here, you're going to select a session. All righty, and any session that you created. So assume that you created a virtual session, I'm sorry, a virtual office hours. So now you have your virtual office hours. You access your repeating virtual office hours, not your virtual class, but your virtual office hours. Copy the guest link from your virtual office hours section then you're in your course menu you're going to create a web link and the name of it's going to be virtual office hours so right now there's a default link that says virtual sessions or online classes whatever it says you're going to create another one that says virtual office hours and paste the guest link in that course that you want to have students from the other section visit you. So here in your actual course, you're gonna create this one in your current course so that your students can come directly to your office hours section, or you're going to also create a web link in every course you teach if you want the students to visit you all at that same time. Make it available and then submit and you'll have a brand new virtual office hours link. The link never changes. This guest link will never change and it will not be available to students except during that designated time. So if you have office hours between eight and nine and they click on it at 915, this link is not gonna work. It's going to tell them that your session is over, the next session will be blah, 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 because it's a repeating session. So it does know the next time that you have office hours and they will get a, a message, an error message that tells them the next office hours will begin on Wednesday at 8 a.m. All right, so now I just wanna ask you, do you have any questions on conceptually what we're trying to do? Okay, I guess I can uh, give you a quick poll. All right, so here's the poll. Is there a difference between virtual hours, virtual office hours and a virtual session? All right, so it looks like everyone, okay, so most people are saying, yes, there is. And a couple of people are saying, no, they aren't. <laughs> they are created the same way, but yes, there is a difference between the actual virtual office hours because you are there to answer questions for the student. A virtual session is when you're going to lecture to that actual student, to that student or a group of students. Okay, so very good. So right now, I'm going to share my screen with you, and I'm going to demonstrate both of these. Okay, so right here, I could have a session called virtual class, and or I could call it virtual sessions or online classes, whatever I want to call it but students are expecting it to be called virtual something. So virtual sessions, it's always going to put you in your collaborate sessions, always. So here you're going to see all of your sessions listed. That's why I rather you create a session that actually says virtual office hours and it puts you directly in the session. So I'm going to create a virtual class session. This is going to be um, our class, which is Accounting 101. And it's going to begin next 
Monday, and it starts at 10 a.m. And it ends at 11, um, 11.50. Not quite sure of the classes, 11.50. All right. And this session starts and ends on the same day because it does. You have a course that starts at 10 and it ends at 1150 and then the class is over, except it's a repeating session. So it's every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, every week. Hang on. There we go. All right. So it's every Monday and Wednesday. And this course goes for 10 weeks. So every Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to meet. And it's not going to end. Okay, I'm going to come in and I'm going to lecture for the entire hour and a half uh, every Monday and Wednesday for 10 weeks. Create. All right. So that's that one. And I'm not going to send the guest link because it's not office hours. These are two separate classes for my students. OK, so my students signed up for Accounting 101 at 10, and I have another group that signed up for Accounting 101, but that class is at 2 o'clock. So I'm going to have two of these for my two different sections of the same class, because this is class time. And when students log in, they have to be in the right class. So this is class time. So technically, I need two of these, one for the Accounting 101 Section 1 and one for the Accounting 101 Section 2. And if I look here, I'll see all of my sessions, 9-7, 9-9, that's the Monday and the Wednesday, 9-14, and that's 9-16, that's the next Monday and Wednesday. So I have all of these sessions that have been created for me. Okay, so I'm going to collapse them. Okay, so I'm going to collapse them. All right, so there's my accounting 101 for my section one only. And I would create another one for my accounting 101 section two. In addition, I'm going to create my virtual office hours. So this is virtual, I'm going to call it virtual office hours. And my office hours for both of my classes, my students are able to visit me in my office every day right before this class, which is at 9 o'clock a.m. I have office hours at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., Okay, so for every single, every Monday. So let's say I have office hours from 9 until, um, or at 8 a.m., just every Monday. We can do that also. Um, it doesn't matter if it's Monday or Wednesday. And I want the guest link. I need the guest link because I have to invite my students from Accounting 101, Section 2. So I want the guest link. I have to go ahead and click create, but before I do, this is a repeating session. Every Monday only, I'm in that session for office hours for 10 weeks. And it's a repeating session. I need that guest link, and so I'm going to click create. Now I got the guest link. I'm going to copy the guest link, which Control C. So not only do I have to click here, but I also have to press Control C. Please use Control C, it tells me. So I use Control C to copy, and then I save my virtual office hours, and I don't need to do anything else. And here's that session, and it's recurring. And so what I want to do is go and click the plus symbol, get a web link, and name it Virtual Office Hours. And I'm going to paste the guest link, and I'm going to make it available to my students, and then I'm going to click Submit. Now, when these students click this link, 
Yeah, someone else told me earlier that this wasn't working. So there's something going on. The um the move is not actually moving in the menu. And I'm actually gonna try this other method and see if it's moving. So I need to let Jolene know that that's not working. Yeah, so it's not moving. I don't know why. All right. So right here, virtual office hours. If I could, I'd move this up and put it here, but that's okay. Now, when my students click this, and I'm going to create this link in this class, and I'm going to create a link just like this in my 101 section two. I'm going to create this link in two classes so that when all of the students click it, it's going to put me directly in my session. And this session has not started yet. The next one is going to be, the next time I have office hours, it's very nice that it tells me or tells them that that's going to be August 24th at 9 a.m. Join at that time. And then you can just click the link here to go back. All right. And so I'm going to come back and see if there's any questions. Do we need to schedule all of your virtual classes or do we go directly into the course room? Your students may not know. That's a good question, Maria. I use the course room just to record asynchronous lectures. So that's going to be up to you. I personally would schedule them and I would only use the course room for asynchronous, but it's still just a room. If you don't have any classes listed in your sessions, then your students won't get confused. But if you have another session listed and your students, I couldn't find you. I clicked on the session and I didn't know, I clicked on it and it said that it didn't start yet. You know, So you don't want to give them any opportunity to not be able to locate you. As a matter of fact, I typically tell faculty to lock the course room. I usually tell faculty that this course room is available at all times and students can be in here without you. So I usually have you guys to lock that room so that the students don't go there, but they always consciously click on your course, which is right here. So that's kind of the way that I would do it. Is the course room going to be explained in the Use and Collaborate course? Yes, uh-huh, I do explain it, mm -hmm. yes. It's just, so the course room is a room that's available and you never ever need to create a virtual session because you just use it on the fly. So it's just always there and available. The problem is students can go in there too and then that course room, you have students in an unsupervised session. So you don't want that. Um, so we don't know what they're doing in there. So you don't want them in there in an unsupervised session. So I usually ask, I ask t t faculty to lock the session and then schedule supervised sessions with your students. Now, if you want your students to go in there and record a presentation or record a video, you can do that. You can schedule a session. Let me just make sure um, everyone, hang on a second. So here, if I want to unlock this, and then I'm going to edit the settings, I can give a guest link right here. And then students can join as a moderator. So that means I'm going to give them a special link to this room. And when they go in, they are going to be a moderator in that room that's always available and not locked so that they can go in there and record their sessions. So if they just go in there right now as it is, they are regular participants and they won't have any rights or anything. So if you want them to be able to access a session and create a video for your course, you need to give them access to that room or you can create a new session 
and give them access to that. So it doesn't matter. These do the same. I tell faculty, this is for you. Your on-demand session that you don't have to schedule anything. You can just go in there and start recording and be done. But um, it, it's a little confusing because you have two areas, the course room or you can create sessions. So they both do the same thing. All right. Okay. So how was that, you guys? So um, are we having a clearer understanding? Let's ask another poll. Okay, so yes, both, no, asynchronous only, and then no, synchronous. Well, you probably are not supposed to have synchronous only. Let me see. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. All right. Does that make sense? So yes, both asynchronous and synchronous. No, I'm only going to use it for asynchronous purposes or no, I'm going to use for synchronous. That means live sessions only. So that's probably not the actual answer because I think some people you're required to have virtual office hours. So it's going to be interesting to see how this poll comes out. All right, so most persons are planning to use both. Perfect. And now I know that you know what both are, what the difference between the two. Are there any questions? All right, so here's my standard poll. Okay, so here's my standard poll. Did you learn something new today? <laughs> okay, perfect. Now that virtual office hours link is gonna put them directly in your session, in their chat, I'm sorry, in the virtual office hour session. And if they go in at any time that, they're, that the session is not going on, they're gonna get a message that tells them the next time office hours are. Okay, and actually, if they go in the class uh, during a session before the next session, they'll still get that message too. Okay, but they can't be in that session without you. I learned that I should have the virtual hour link in the, yes, correct. Yes, the virtual office hours. Yes, correct. Correct. All right. 